You're walking down the street when you see graffiti that grabs your attention. The future changes the past every day. You're not so sure you understand what this means. But luckily, your best friend is a ninja scientist, so you text him a picture of the graffiti you just saw. In less than 10 minutes, your friend Moody says, Stop by the lab, and I'll show you what this means. P.S. Your life might never be the same. You're a curious person, so you don't think twice before heading down to Moody's lab. When you arrive, Moody has already set up everything to show you one of quantum mechanics' most surreal experiments. You ever heard of entanglement? Moody asks. Judging by the confused look on your face, he adds, I'll show you that. Usually, when we say something is entangled, we mean it's in a complicated relationship with something, right? In mechanics, that's pretty much the same. Let's say we have two lab-created particles that are always interacting with each other. Let's call them Rose and Daisy. Rose and Daisy are like twin particles, and their behavior is synchronized. If one moves to the left, the other does the same. In order for this experiment to work, we have to separate Rose and Daisy. Rose is put in a freezer and moved to Los Angeles, while Daisy is packed up and taken to New York City. Rose has no idea where Daisy is and vice versa. And there's no communication between them. No, they can't even retweet each other. But somehow, if someone as much as poked Rose, Daisy would behave as if she had been poked. Just to make sure we got this correctly, the twin particles are placed across the country from each other. There is no communication between them. But if Rose is poked in LA, Daisy will feel it instantaneously in New York City. As Moody shows you this, the look on your face gets more and more confused. How on earth is this possible, you ask? Why, entanglement, Moody answers. For quantum mechanics, it's as if these particles behave like magic dice. If you roll both dice at the same time, they will give you the same result over and over again. Even if two complete strangers ran them, in two completely different locations, it does sound like magic. What exactly are we looking at, though? The first thing that might come to mind is that some kind of instant communication is happening between the twin particles. If this was true, then one of the fundamental principles of physics would be omitted. If Rose and Daisy were communicating with each other, this would have to happen faster than the speed of light. And according to our genius buddy Einstein, that's impossible. But there's another option, Moody says. What if this experiment shows us that time doesn't only move forward like we're used to believing? What if this proves that time is moving backward? The idea is that Rose and Daisy would be entangled to the point where, when someone pokes them in the present, the reaction happens due to time travel. It travels back to the time before Rose and Daisy were separated. They exchange information, and then the new effects travel back to the present, when the action of poking is happening. In this case, time is more or less like a cubist painting. It wouldn't be linear, organized in the order we grew up with. That is, past, present, and then future. Here, time would be like a two-headed arrow, pointing both toward the future and toward the past. Wow, okay, this sure is a shocker. But what does this mean for us humans? Does entanglement work for us too? Or is it only possible at a microscopic level? Let's see. Maybe you've heard of the butterfly effect before. There's even a Hollywood movie with the same title that talks about this phenomenon. The butterfly effect talks about how even tiny actions and changes can have enormous consequences throughout time. The famous phrase that describes this quantum phenomenon is, a butterfly flapped its wings in Brazil and caused a tornado in Texas. It's a metaphor to describe what is known in the quantum mechanics world as chaos theory. Hey Moody, can you come here for a second? What exactly is chaos theory, and what does this have to do with us humans? Maybe you've come to a point in your life where you had to make important decisions. Like, do I accept this job in another country, or do I get married to the love of my life? Do I travel the world for six months, or do I invest all my money in my best friend's startup company? These life-defining decisions make us wonder if the entire course of our lives will be changed depending on our choice. 
If you accept that job, does that mean you will never marry the love of your life? Not necessarily, right? For a long time, scientists have debated whether there is such a thing as fate or determinism, or if life is essentially chaotic and unpredictable. Depending on which strand of science you want to bet on, you can have either one or the other. The butterfly effect, or chaos theory, says that if you change even minimally the first conditions of a situation, the outcomes will be unpredictable and chaotic. So if you were driving down the same road you take to go to work, but you decide to make a left instead of a right, an infinite number of situations may await you. Chaos theory would say that fate or determinism doesn't exist. So on a human level, that means that the life you would have if you chose to travel the world for six months is completely different from the life you would have if you married your childhood sweetheart. A great way to understand chaos theory is the weather. Ever wondered why weather forecasts usually get it wrong? Why they say we're in for a sunny week, but halfway through we get heavy rain? That's because it's extremely difficult to pinpoint with precision the first conditions of the atmosphere. Therefore, it's almost impossible to make precise predictions about it. Remember we said even tiny changes in initial conditions can completely alter the outcome? Computers may be able to make approximate predictions for one, two, or three days. But after that, the distance between reality and what was predicted gets too big. But scientists have also played with the idea that life is fated or determined. This idea was the most accepted one until quantum mechanics came along with its otherworldly experiments. The most famous experience that defended the existence of fate is known as Laplace's demon. French scholar Pierre-Simon Laplace suggested that if we were able to know the precise location and speed of each atom in the universe, then we would be able to predict past and future trajectories. In other words, if we could pinpoint the exact coordinates of an atom, we'd be able to type that into a computer and the machine would give us all the possible trajectories for that atom. And if that atom were you, that would mean a computer could predict all possible timelines you could experience in this lifetime. It didn't take too long before Laplace's theory was rebuked, simply because it's practically impossible to find with precision the exact location of an atom. This leads us back to chaos theory and the difficulty to pinpoint the exact coordinates of a particle in time and space, leaving a lot of room for unpredictability. Yikes! It's a lot to take in, huh? Scientists do believe there's also a middle way, that life can be both deterministic and non-deterministic at the same time. We can sum it all up with a famous quote by Nehru. He said that, Life is like a game of cards. The hand you are dealt is determinism. But the way you play it is free will. So, what do you think of that? That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.